So in the first video, we established that Martin Luther, this professor of theology in Wittenberg, this Augustinian monk, had posted his 95 theses on the door of the castle church in Wittenberg. At least this is how the tradition tells the story that took issue with the way in which the Catholic Church thought about salvation and specifically took issue with the selling of indulgences. Luther was arguing against the sale of indulgences and that kind of monetary transaction for getting into heaven. Tetzel, who was selling indulgences, we quoted in the first video, but here's another quote. Won't you part with even a farthing to buy this letter? It won't bring you money, but rather a divine and immortal soul, whole and secure in the kingdom of heaven. We have to understand that this exists within this larger scheme, and the church thought that the ultimate aim was a good one, but he sounds like a used car salesman. So Luther, in one section of the 95 Theses, says, you know, people are going to ask questions that we can't really answer about what we're doing with these indulgences, such as... Why does not the Pope empty purgatory for the sake of holy love and the dire need of the souls that are there if he redeems an infinite number of souls for the sake of miserable money with which to buy a church? The former reason would be most just, the latter is most trivial. So what he's saying is, if the Pope has the authority, the treasury of merit of all of the saints that he can distribute, why is he selling them to build the church? Why doesn't he just redeem the souls that are in purgatory and send them up to heaven if he has the power to do that. And there was a perception that the church at times was a rather corrupt institution that seemed to be more concerned with power and political issues and worldly issues and not so concerned with the salvation of souls. Well, the previous pope, Julius II, certainly had that kind of reputation. Right. This is a hard thing for us to realize, I think, but this time the popes claimed not only spiritual power like they do today, but also political power and governed these very significant lands known as the papal states. And so in some ways, the pope functioned as the princes of territories in Italy. Right. Pope Julius II led armies into battles against other Christians to reclaim territories that were historically part of the papal states. So this notion of a kind of corruption in Rome is infusing this entire discussion, this entire argument. So there had been other reformers before Luther who were not successful. For example, we could look to John Wycliffe in the 14th century. So in the 1300s, this Englishman had set about to translate the Bible into the vernacular, into the common language, into English. He organized